Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and here is your latest forecast update for April 16th, 2025. Offshore from New South Wales and halfway between Australia and New Zealand is a monster low pressure system currently situated over Norfolk Island. This system here is going to end up being one of the strongest storms of the year, and it is very lucky that it is not going for Queensland or New South Wales, at least from an Australian standpoint here, but some significant severe weather conditions are still possible across New Zealand's North and South Islands, and also some pretty significant ramifications are expected for New South Wales in southeastern Queensland. Let's talk about this system right now before getting into other details that more directly impact Australia, but this system here certainly could be bringing some life-threatening swirls and some strong wind gusts, cooler temperatures and showers to New South Wales. So stick around throughout this part of the video. You can see this monster low-pressure system really building up right now. It's undergoing a process called bomb cyclogenesis, which is where it drops its intensity very, very quickly. It becomes a rapidly intensifying extratropical low-pressure system in a very similar fashion to how tropical cyclones go uh, through rapid intensification. I would also like to reiterate that this is not a tropical cyclone. I mean, a lot of people have that PTSD after tropical cyclone Alfred moved through into the southeast corner of Queensland. This has no tropical characteristics whatsoever. It is forming from the remnants of a tropical cyclone that blew through the southern parts of Vanuatu and New Caledonia over the last couple of days, but the remnants of that system now very quickly being absorbed by this low pressure system uh, and then it's being swallowed up royally, that's for sure. A very significant storm, that's for sure. Very powerful indeed. It's got a pressure right now of 993 millibars but that is rapidly dropping. If you've got an eagle eye, you would have noticed the wind observations now over in New Zealand. You can see 84 kilometers an hour at Cape Ringa, and you've got 76 kilometers an hour here at uh, some islands just offshore from Auckland. Again, New Zealand geography is not my forte, and I don't want to be butchering names down there. But strong wind is now beginning to develop across the North Island, especially for locations in exposed areas north of Auckland. Those winds are really beginning to pick up now, but they're nothing compared to what they're going to be through tonight and into tomorrow. It's about to get very windy very quickly indeed. Let's jump into the forecast here, you can see the low pressure system moving through North Folk Island over the next couple of hours before tonight. It continues that rapid deepening, and then we're expecting a very strong low pressure system to begin, uh, to begin a stalling motion halfway between New South Wales and the North Island of New Zealand through early tomorrow morning. It's going to be a very strong system, that's for sure. Pressure somewhere between 970 and 975 millibars through tomorrow morning. It will weaken very slowly through tomorrow uh, evening and then into Friday morning, and then it looks like through Friday and into Saturday. As it gets pushed over towards New Zealand, especially through Saturday morning, it is going to weaken quite dramatically and it basically falls apart through Sunday and Sunday before it gets itself towards the South Island where it will make a crossing of the coastline again in a similar fashion to how a tropical cyclone would, it moves towards the coastline and I guess you can call it making a landfall but the system here expected to pretty much fall apart and get obliterated by high pressure and other low pressure systems through Sunday and into Monday, pretty much as quick as it's going to form as well but it is going to be holding strong through tomorrow now I don't know if you noticed but those winds expected to be very strong through tonight into tomorrow morning with sustained winds averaging 60 to 70 kilometers an hour, uh, sustained up towards 90 kilometers an hour actually for exposed and elevated locations through tonight and all throughout tomorrow and into early Friday morning across the Northern Island, especially on the Northern Peninsula of the Northern Island, north of Hamilton, so including Auckland and those locations. And then, then for exposed coastal locations beginning tomorrow night across the South Island, especially along the West Coast of the South Island, some significant winds averaging 60 to 90 kilometers an hour with peak gusts up to 120 five kilometers an hour expected there. The wind gusts are going to be extreme over New Zealand as well. You can see the peak wind gusts around the core of this low pressure system expected to be in excess of 150 and potentially as high as 170 kilometers an hour. So again, I would like to reiterate one of the strongest storms of uh, the season. We're expecting this one to be. It'd be scary if we saw many stronger storms than this and some strong winds also expected across the North Island of New Zealand. Heavy falls also expected across New Zealand as well. Widespread falls between 80 to 150 millimeters across Northern Ireland for exposed coastal locations and then widespread falls between 100 and 200 millimetres of the Southern Alps along the South Island and isolated falls between 350 millimetres possible around the Nelson Bay area uh, outside of Wellington. Some significant falls possible down there. On the New South Wales side of things and the Australian impacts here, the main threat is going to be swell in the ocean. There's going to be some significant swells developing from tonight and extending through the New South Wales coastline and pretty much the entire eastern seaboard through tomorrow and out towards Friday. This system here is going to be uh, pumping through some very significant significant swells and as such coastal conditions are expected to be exceedingly hazardous beginning from tonight and extending through Thursday and into Friday, especially from Thursday night and into Friday morning. Locations that are likely to be affected include uh, those north of Malakuta, so through Bega, Wollongong, Sydney, Newcastle, Tyree, Coffs Harbour, Lismore and right up towards uh, Brisbane and the Gold Coast we could be seeing swells up around the two to three metre heights there. The highest well, swells are expected between the coast, between Lismore down towards Sydney with swells there peaking on Friday morning up around the 
four to five meter mark. They will be continuing to drop off through Friday night and into early Saturday morning. You might get a very slim chance at some winter boat or some uh, near winter boating through Saturday and Sunday or Easter boating along Sydney Harbour and into some very protected locations through after about Saturday afternoon and into Saturday evening. But apart from that, any shore-based activity uh, between now and out towards Saturday night into Sunday morning is strongly advised against uh, across New South Wales and southeast Queensland. These swells are going to be life-threatening, that's for sure. Some very significant uh, coastal erosion can also be expected even in the wake of Tropical Cyclone Alfred. Thankfully that this system is going to be far enough south as to where the worst impacted locations aren't going to be those that have been smashed by Tropical Cyclone Alfred, but still expect some significant coastal erosion and some really significant wave heights as well. Those seas are going to be powerful, so stay well away from them. Don't risk your life for the perfect photo, uh, but for those around the Sydney and the Newcastle area as well, very densely populated locations along the coastline, don't go out and doing dumb things in a storm like this. Very significant weather, that's for sure. Uh, they're no stranger to this type of stuff in the Tasman Sea. We do get low pressure systems of comparative strength at least once or twice a year. So again, no stranger to that, that's for sure. But hazardous surf conditions catch people off guard, especially because this one's going to be so far offshore. That's just how powerful it is. It's going to be closer to New Zealand and still able to bring some meaty swells ashore for New South Wales. So again, just make sure you are keeping that in the back of your head. And I strongly urge against all shore-based or beach based activities between Thursday, Friday and Saturday, no matter the reason. There's just no reason for it at all. Even if you're an experienced surfer, we're talking about swells up around the five to six meter mark and it is really dangerous to be out in those kind of conditions because if you get yourself into any kind of trouble, there is nobody that's going to come out and save you. Let's talk about showers and storms. We are going to be seeing that constant southerly stream of showers we have seen for the last couple of days continue along the New South Wales coastline with showers intensifying later on today and into early tomorrow morning. If you have showers are with falls up to around 20 or 30 millimetres possible through tomorrow morning outside of Newcastle up into the Barrington Tops. Showers will ease off temporarily through Thursday afternoon and clearing for a relatively fine day through Friday and in towards Saturday as well. And it looks like generally speaking the long weekend is going to be fine and sunny before a few showers and storms kick up late Sunday night and into early Monday morning when the return to the rain is going to pipe up again through Monday and into Tuesday for the next working week as low pressure systems again begin to build in the Tasman Sea. This one of course nowhere near as strong and nowhere near as uh, dangerous to the New South Wales or the New Zealand coastline, this one getting itself well out to sea very quickly, but it's a feature that's been on the forecast modelling for the last couple of days, and showers and storms expected through early next week across much of the New South Wales coastline as well. Showers and storms are probably going to be a pretty consistent feature on the forecast now for the next six to eight months for New South Wales. The dry weather is pretty much all but done now, and it looks like, the considering the forecast pictures that we're looking at right now, turbulent times are ahead for the, for the Tasman Sea, but this system here, this is one hell of a system, that's for sure. A very significant low pressure system, one that's very powerful indeed and is exceedingly dangerous as well. So again, make sure you are in the know about this system and you are, aren't taking any chances. No boating, no fishing, no swimming, no uh, surfing from now until at least Sunday until those coastal hazard watches have been dropped. Stay safe to all of our friends over in New Zealand. Great to have you watching as well. A very significant system, that is for sure. Let's turn things tropical now and talk about what is, I believe, Tropical Cyclone Errol. To be honest, I haven't even looked. Yes, it is Tropical Cyclone Errol, but looking at the picture, it's never not going to be Tropical Cyclone Errol, that's for sure. A significant system in the making, that's for sure, expecting a powerful Tropical Cyclone out of this, really developing it quite nicely over the last couple of hours as well. Some good convection around the storm centre, and there I say it might even be an eye-like feature beginning to form. If you've got that eagle eye there, that could just be a bit of a shadow in the convection, but yeah, it certainly looks like it's now beginning to develop an eye, this system here. So Tropical Cyclone Errol likely a lot stronger than Category 1 status, which I believe is what it's officially held as right now. It's making a run for Category 3 status, but it's got about 24 to 36 hours to do so before that hairpin turn is forecast to happen sometime tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening back towards the WA coastline where terminal weakening is, is expected to continue from Thursday lunchtime onwards. System will approach the West Australian coastline. It will get a little bit close through Friday night into Saturday morning and we're going to have some rainy and some windy conditions for Easter uh, for locations between Broome up towards Columbia as this low pressure system uh, moves into the coastline there but nothing significant at all. Major forecast models have now taken the system in for a landfall at tropical low or even tropical cyclone status at some point between Sunday and Sunday. So it'll be interesting to see what actually happens here. It's only going to come very close to the coastline as either a remnant low or a full-blown tropical cyclone. 
Uh, rainfall definitely looks to be the main threat of this system here, but I believe with wind shear that's expected to absolutely harass this system through Friday and into Saturday, expecting the rainfall threat to not be as high as what it probably should be for a tropical cyclone or tropical low of this magnitude. Let's talk about that rainfall threat right now because that is kind of the main threat, and then I'll be telling you what pre uh, precautions and preparations you need to be making for your location. Widespread falls between 25 and 125 millimeters expected up from 80 mile beach through Broome, Derby, Columba Roo, and up towards Columba Roo, with isolated falls 300 millimeters possible uh, around the broom area uh, and I say possible very very loosely because again this is heavily dependent on how close this tropical low slash tropical cyclone gets to the coastline if it does make a very close approach which we're not going to know until about Thursday night into Friday morning so only about two days worth of notice there about a day and a half's worth of notice rather then we're going to be seeing some pretty significant rainfall but if it does stay offshore which again we'll find out Thursday night or Friday morning the rainfall threat and the wind threat won't be as significant that's for sure so for those between broom and and Derby, make sure you are ready for a tropical cyclone. Have your uh, cyclone emergency kits ready, but considering that this is expected to be a category one at worst, and if things change, you will have at least a full day to prepare for this accordingly. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to be making some significant preparations right now. Maybe have some sandbags on standby if you do live in a flood prone area, especially if you are likely to be cut off. And if you do live in a remote location as well, it would probably be wise to get a week or two's worth of food supplies. But it's not like far North Queensland where they don't, pan they don't panic buyers hard up here. Here. So again, uh, everybody's going to have enough food to go around for the most part. So make sure you are ready for that and uh, make sure you look after yourself accordingly in an event like this. Again, we're not 100% sure if this is going to come in for a landfill. It's looking like a 50-50 chance this time. It's kind of the worst forecast that we can give a 50-50 chance for landfall. But if it does happen, it's going to be an exceedingly weak system. And I'll have the details on that, a guaranteed answer on that by Thursday night or Friday morning. So check out the Facebook page because I'll be posting that as soon as I know. Let's shift focus now over into the Gulf of Carpentaria where we do have another tropical low beginning to develop up there as well. It's really beginning to put some shape together as well. The system looking quite healthy this morning. Plenty of thunderstorms wrapping up on the southwestern side and some heavy falls being embedded in them as well. So it's a lucky thing that they're not wrapping themselves up over the Northern Territory mainland. Otherwise, we would be talking about some relatively significant rainfall accumulations moving through up there. This tropical uh, low is likely to become a tropical cyclone as per all major forecast modeling. And you can see the wind forecast suggestions for this system here likely to continue all organizing it throughout the remainder of today and into early tomorrow morning, wrapping itself up quite nicely through tomorrow afternoon and evening before moving in the, into the Gulf of Carpentaria through Good Friday and into Easter Saturday, where it is likely to become a tropical cyclone, very briefly speaking, through Saturday and into Sunday before a hairpin turn is expected to happen on Sunday and into Monday, moving it back over into the Timor Sea where some uh, strengthening is possible, but again, not too much of it expected. And then the long range forecast of this system is exceedingly murky with forecast models either taken down towards the Timor area or down back into the Gulf of Carpentaria, but it does look like this system has a good chance to kick around until late April or early May. Major forecast models have been saying that this system is going to kick around for quite a while, and provided it doesn't head too far north or straight towards the Indonesian waters too far, it is likely to kick around for quite a while, possibly as far as the next 15 days or so. So this is going to be an exciting system to track as well. A lot of different uh, forecast uh, possibilities here. So it'll be interesting to see what this system actually takes and what life it actually lives. Again, in terms of impacts of the Carpentaria, so I'd expect nothing but some heavier falls here and there and maybe some gusty winds between Thursday Island down towards Urukan. Uh, so including Weeper through Friday night into Saturday and into early Sunday morning. When I say gusty winds, and I'm not talking about gusts in excess of 90 kilometers an hour, so there's no need to be preparing for a full-blown tropical cyclone. Stay safe, stay calm, and stay collected, but it looks like Easter up there might be a washout this season. Anyways, let's talk about the long-range forecast of the Coral Sea. Whilst there's nothing happening there right now, you can see on the radar and satellite imagery, there's nothing to be talking about apart from a couple of showers moving through into the Kasseri coastline right now. Typical trade wind, sea breeze type stuff, nothing to be concerned about at all. A few showers and storms and they're no strange to them, that's for sure. But later on into the forecast period, we might be talking about a few showers and storms really beginning to, de to develop along a low pressure line. They could develop into the northern half of the Coral Sea after next week or this coming weekend, the Easter long weekend. Let's just start things off a little bit sooner to now. You can see showers and storms continuing through tomorrow, uh, tonight and into early tomorrow morning. They'll clear through tomorrow and into Friday as well. Showers will be widespread through uh, uh, midday tomorrow by the looks of things through the Casper Coast and those sea breeze showers are expected to hold off through Saturday but returning Sunday by the looks of things and a few showers and thunderstorms expected here and there through Sunday before a return to the dry conditions expected to begin from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday but you can see as we see these dry conditions in the uh, North Queensland area there's plenty of rainfall beginning to develop along that low pressure line uh, south of Port Moresby and Papua New Guinea and between the Coral Sea uh, or into the Coral Sea coastline there so it'll be interesting to see what actually develops with major 
forecast model of the GFS actually suggesting a bit of a tropical low to develop after about the 26th or the 27th of April. A lot of things can happen here at this time of the year and again we're not writing off wet season activity so tropical lows slash rainfall events slash streams of showers moving through up into far north Queensland so we're going to have to keep close tabs on the weather scene up here over the next couple of weeks because things can happen and they do happen late April early May and also the long range forecast is still suggesting a wet May so we're going to have to keep very close tabs on far north Queensland but we're not 100% sure what's going to be happening at this point in time so there's no need to be panicking or no need to be making preparations for a potential coral sea tropical low or tropical cyclone or rainfall event at this point in time. Anyways, moving out of the rainfall in the tropics, that's for sure. We've talked about southeast Queensland and New South Wales. In terms of the rainfall forecast for the southern states, so southwest Western Australia, South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, we do have a little bit on the forecast for the next 14 days. There's nothing too crazy that's coming through over the next 14 days, but you can see a couple of good showers expected here and there for the west coast of Tasmania. No stranger to that type of stuff this time of the year, that's for sure. They expect this type of stuff. We've also got more rainfall expected along the south coast of Victoria, which is good news for them indeed. They are drought in impacted right now so any drop of rainfall that they can get is good news to them unfortunately south australia especially into the southeast corner and the air peninsula dominated by dry skies so rainfall there not really expected over the next 14 days a couple of drops are possible here and there but it's not going to be enough to break the extreme drought conditions that they've been experiencing over the last couple of months and out about the last year down there showers are expected to be widespread across the goldfields region again i believe later on into the forecast period it's certainly their wet season and not later on into the forecast period but over the next couple of hours and the next couple of days actually with this west coast trough we're seeing a couple of lines of showers and thunderstorms powered by this low pressure system that's situated offshore right now and they're expected to develop once again over into the weed belt and then into the gold fields. They've had a very wet last month or so over into the gold fields of Western Australia. Very healthy rainfall accumulation so that's for sure with more widespread thunderstorms and showers expected throughout the course of today tending to rainfall at times through the gold fields so Ravensthorpe, Norseman, Aspirin sort of area and then down towards the southeastern corner of WA showers and thunderstorms expected to be widespread through Thursday night into Friday morning moving into South Australia through uh Friday night into Saturday morning we could be seeing a couple of good showers here and there um, but apart from that there's no real rainfall to be talking about across uh, much of the southwest corner of Western Australia it's just into the weed belt and into parts of the gold fields at this point in time however they will take it that's for sure it's their wettest couple of months of the year uh, as per what the long range forecast was suggesting so widespread falls between 25 to 50 millimeters can be expected with isolated falls up to 100 millimeters expected which will take some of these locations up to two month rainfall accumulations but between three and 400 millimeters. So it has added up quite quickly for parts of the gold fields. A year or even a year and a half worth of rainfall for some of these locations has fallen in the last couple of weeks. Very healthy stuff indeed, and they will take it, that's for sure, with open arms as we head into our agricultural season of 2025 down in the southwest of Western Australia. But on that note, that is all that I have time for today. I do hope you've enjoyed the more kind of eastern shift towards the Tasman Sea and even out towards New Zealand as well. I do thank everybody from New Zealand and watching these videos as well. The support lately has has been much appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like on the video while you're at it. It is much appreciated. But that is all from me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.